Okay, for our study tonight, we're going to look at a few places in the Bible. We're going to start off in Job 32, 21. This study is going to be two nights, tonight and tomorrow night, Lord willing. To Job 32, 21, let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person. In other words, no favoritism. You don't have your chief friends. Neither let me give flattering titles unto men. Doctor, reverend, pastor, uh, all kinds of titles. There's titles out there. You know, jobs every year, they give themselves a broader and bigger name. I, working for a submarine, building submarine, I was a noise control technician. I can't tell you what that is. It's a top secret. I had a top secret job. I had a job that I was warned at the Russians. But if you want to put it in plain, simple classification, I worked with the pipe hangerman. Put another class. I work with the people that work with pipes. I'm a, a, a environmentalist. No, you're a janitor. You get these titles so you get bigger pay, and you know that's what it is. For I know not how. I know, for I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, thy maker would soon take me away. There's a danger that Job writes to us of giving somebody a title undeserved. And you can look at any profession. And you know, you know what the big thing is? You know why nobody can be just an auto mechanic? Is you got to go to college. Or trade school to work to learn the words mechanics use. The very fact is, uh, I went to college. I had been trained in college here in Daytona Beach to be an office manager. Now, how a, a auto mechanic can't be an office manager is the technical terms of each trade. The auto mechanic or the, the office manager, which I never got a job in, it's not like you're cutting somebody open to do or repair a vital organ of a body. Okay? It's not brain surgery, as they used to say when I grew up. The ones that deserve the titles are doctors and physicians. The very fact is, you get this pill, you know, 26 letters, so they can charge you because it's in Latin. And you got preachers and pastors today in the ministry, they got the title of a PhD doctor because they try to lay off on you Greek and Hebrew. And we don't speak Greek or Hebrew. And when you do come about the Greek and the Hebrew and the original text and, and the original thoughts and in the original, and you get these big, strong words you can't even find in Webster's 1828 dictionary, you don't deserve that title. A title is earned by your character and what people learn. I don't care what, listen, my college I went to for, I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor of theology. Oh, you know, see, there's that title. You know, I, I've been a street preacher. I've been a witness. I've been several uh, uh, Bible studies. I've been a, a prison chaplain. I earned my title where people got saved. People have turned from the wrong Bible to the right pe Bible. The people have changed their lives. By God using me. And it ain't me. It's the Holy Spirit. And that's what's forgotten. You know, oh, you know, I learned so much from you. No, you learned so much for the Holy Spirit using me, inspiration, to teach the Bible. It's not me. When I and all my counterparts in the ministry, when we get to heaven, we're not a PhD and we're not a doctor. We're 
Christians. We're not even Baptist Christians because there'll be Catholics that are saved. There'll be Mormons that are saved. There are Jehovah Witnesses that are saved. There are New Age people that are saved. There are people that do yoga and eat yogurt that will be saved. So to Matthew 23, we, we begin a new chapter tonight. And we're going to break this chapter down because it's important. I mean, I don't want to give you an apple. That's my cat. I don't want to give you an apple and say, here, devour it all. There goes my cat. So, now we come off the point that we had the Herodians, we had the Sadducees, and we had the Pharisees all tag team in Jesus. All right, go in the ring, get them, and Jesus won. Now we're going to pick up. And Jesus is going to explain these characters. And what you see with the Herodians is a government group. Today, Republican or Democrat. They love the government of Herod. They're Christians today. They love the government of Republicans. The Sadducees are a religious science group. They don't believe in anything. That's your U.S. colleges and your public school systems. And they will try any, see, the Herodians, they will attack Jesus in the government. The Sadducees will attack Jesus in evolution and science and teaching. The Pharisees are the strictest of religions. We do, we do, we do, look at what we do. And they're not known by God. Now, Jesus, who is God, is going to step in in chapter 23. We're going to break it in half again. He's going to explain to you what these characters are. So then spank Jesus to the multitude. He tells the people, and I've had people tell, I've had even Christians in church, I've had pastors, you shouldn't say that about those people. Jesus did. What would Jesus do? I swear, if I had one of those WW, what would, what, WWJD. If I had one of those on my my hand right now as a bracelet, one of those, those bracelets, I swear it would start on fire. Because I would blow the fuses. I want to tell you something. Jesus, Paul, named names. And they were not ashamed of it. And if I name a name and they take me to court, I would run before that unsaved judge, which we're not supposed to. I say, Your Honor, Paul says to the Corinthian church, if they're Christians and I'm a Christian, we're not to take our matters before the court. But that wouldn't bother, but I, I, I would tell them, hey, that's what the Bible says. And the very fact is, today, the Christian that speaks the truth, not only is he hated by Christians, not only is he hated by pastors of church, but, you know, they would take him to court. I've had past, I've got pastors who hate me because I spoke the truth. I had one pastor, but well, you know, that's kind of cruel what you said and stuff like that. Hey, it's the truth. And if you can't take someone telling you the truth, have I become your enemy because you tell me because I tell you the truth? Well, if you got a spineless jellyfish backbone, get out of the ministry. And if everybody loves you in the ministry and you are great, we were at a church one time, they had a plaque. At the city they were in, they gave them this great plaque. How excellent this church is. Friend, you're not walking with God. Saying the scribes. Now, these are the people that handled the Bible. These would be your scholars today. They handled the Bible and they changed the Bible. They got new versions. They get the originals, which they can't find. You, try to find the originals of Jeremiah that were burnt up. Try to find the originals of, of I think it was Jeremiah or Daniel. And I took it and threw it in the river Euphrates. Okay? How about the originals of Jesus when he woke on the, we wrote on the ground and people walked over and camels walked across and maybe asses, you know, the donkey pooped on it. How about the plaster of the hand that wrote on Belshazzar's wall? What about those originals? That's the scribes. We have a better rendering in the Hebrew, in the Greek. That's the scribes of today. 
the Pharisees. These are the religions. These are, you know, we go by the rules and the traditions, Jesus said, according to scriptures. These are your Catholics, your Lutherans, your Mormons, your morons. You know, the, the Russian Orthodox Church, the Church of England. The Church of the Spaghetti Monster. <laughs> All right. So he's attacking those that handle the Word of God, and he's attacking the religious group. Never mind the scientists and, and the edu educators. There's no battle with them. Because they don't believe in nothing, and the thing that they believe in that we're here by a big bang was nothing. That became something that here we are. <laughs> The Big Bang exploded so young people in America today can get paid by the government to sit and play video games and eat popcorn all day. Yeah, that's progression. All right, they sit in Moses' seat. Boy, he's got a lot to say. That's a position. You know, you got a Moses' seat in the Baptist church, that seat that the pastor sits up on the altar. Where did that come from? This seat is reserved for this family. How dare you sit in my seat? My grandma was like that. It's like, oh, come on, grandma. Okay, so let me ask you a question. We're only in two verses. We're in great trouble here. Two verses. Find me a book and a chapter. A book and a chapter, least. Never mind a verse. Find me in a Bible. Besides this place, you find Moses' seat. The tabernacle was designed by God. The, the, the patterns given to Moses, given unto a man of, of the tribe of Dan, I forget the other tribe, to build everything. There was no seat on the tabernacle, nowhere. You couldn't sit on the brazen altar, you get hot, hot, your pants are on fire. You can't sit on the great on the brazen labor, your pants would be wet. You wouldn't sit on the table because you would get bread on your butt. You wouldn't sit on the candlestick or that'd be a hot proctology for men. You couldn't sit on the altar of incense. That gets a little hot. You sure ain't going to go sit on the mercy seat. That's God's room. A lot of Christians put their pastors on the mercy seat, and that's not where he belongs. So what is this Moses seat? Well, Moses is the author of the law. Do you know a church that has laws and traditions outside the Bible, the scribes? Do you know a representative of a church that sits on a throne? Of supposedly Peter that rides in the throne of the Pope Mobile? That puts laws and regulations on you have to have fish on Friday? Because all the fishermen got upset because they weren't buying fish. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you to observe, that observe and do, all right, fish on Fridays, go to confessional, clean the Mary in your front or backyard, trim your, uh, um, I just saw that word today, um, the, the area of trees around the idol. Genuflect yourself. Hail Mary. Rosary beads. Pray to Mary. But do not ye after their works. Don't do what they do. You know they drink. You know they have sex with the nuns. They have sex with altar boys, that the Pope now says that being a sodomite is, is no no sin, no wrong. I guess he hasn't read his Bible. I wonder why he would approve of a, a, a sodomy when his entire church is involved with altar boys. Uh-huh. I wonder what they're doing 
in the room when they elect a, a pope and the smoke comes out. I wonder what they're doing. <laughs> God knows. For they say and do not. You ever see a priest come out of the confessional? I never did. You ever see the priest take part of the of the literal blood of Jesus? I've never seen it. Do the priests eat fish on Friday or do they have steak? But they put commandments to you. For they bind heavy burdens. Okay, go back to chapter 11. We're going to look at a lot of scripture tonight. 11.30. With how late we may be here. 11.30. And we'll look at verse 28. Now, verse 28 to 30. You said, you know, come unto me all your labor, heavy burden, I will give you. You know, the Christian quotes that. That's not written to you. That's written to Matthew 23. This is written to the people that are under the heavy bondage of the scribes and Pharisees. Come unto me, all your labor and heavy laden. All right, we just read that. They put burdens on you. I will give you rest. What does Jesus make you do? I mean, he will command you, love, love, the, love the, the brethren, love those that love you. You don't have to. And still be saved and go to heaven. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. You don't have to. To be in heaven. Now it would be perfectly proper. Thou shalt not commit adultery. It would be perfectly proper to do that. But you don't have to with Jesus. Take my yoke upon you. Well, a yoke is something you put two animals in to plow. And learn of me. Jesus will show you. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. In a yoke. A yoke is for work. Yes that yoke. Is you and Jesus. And Jesus and you together. We just read part of the Pharisees are not there. They don't do what they tell you to do. Jesus told you to have faith. He had all the faith. Jesus told you to pray. God prayed to the Father. For my yoke is easy. All right, here we go. My burden is light. Now back to Matthew 12. Look at verse 4. 23, 4. They bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born. There it is. You had to go back to 11 and go to 23 to get what 11 was all about. It's not written to you. Even if there are Pharisees and scribes today, they're in the synagogue, not the Baptist church. Now, rest of sure in the Baptist church, there are scribes and Pharisees, but they have different names. They're scholars, they're doctors, they're theologians, they're uh, uh, post hole diggers, you know, PhDs. They're educators. You have to go to this school. You have to get this degree. You have to learn this language. And lay them uh, on men's shoulders. Isn't that a yoke? That's a yoke. So you can get in the yoke of Jesus and have rest. That's the oxymoron. You don't put a yoke on and get rest. Or you can have the yoke of religion. Let's look at it as religion for the rest of this study. You can have the yoke of religion. And it's hard. If you don't stay true to the Catholic Church and... And I and my grandpa got warnings from the Catholic Church we were at. So, you, know, you you can't be buried in our cemetery. Well, you say, big deal. If you're not buried in a Catholic cemetery by a Catholic priest, you can go off into uh, 
purgatory, which there is no purgatory. It's the law, but the law of the Hebrew, I mean, not Hebrew, the law of the heathen of the Catholic Church. I mean, it's like the, the Jehovah Witnesses. You cannot go into a Baptist church. You cannot have any fellowship with a Christian. Well, what if my mom and dad are, are Christians or, or, or even they? You can't have no fellowship with them. Really? I'm telling you, the Bible says, you know, if you don't are, you know, if it's your father, your mother, even yourself, you can't be a disciple. I'm telling you right now, I got most of my family. From the time I've been saved, I got most of my, I've been separated from them. Oh, see? No. They left me. I didn't leave them. Every once in a while, I got a cousin that contacts me on Facebook. See, you live right as a Christian. It's not you. They will separate. I like when you read Pilgrim's Progress and he's talking to Faithful and they got talkative. I love this guy talking. Because sometimes I listen to him like, gee, Lord, is that me? But, but Faithful will say to the Christian, okay, what you say is true. How do we get rid of it? And Christian says, hey, listen, just keep asking the question. Bring up faith. Bring up Jesus. And eventually, he will depart to your company. And he does. <laughs> and they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Well, okay, you have not been faithful to the Pope and the priest. You come to your dying day. You, know, you may not be excused. <laughs> you die without a priest. To do the last right. You're without excuse. I don't care. You know how many Catholics died in battles on battlefields? And I don't know where they are according to Catholic legend and folklore that the priest was not there to give them the last rites. You would figure if you were a good, dedicated Catholic, you would figure, you know, the, the, the Pope would get with God, you know, this guy was... It don't work. My friend, my friend, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne. Lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Do you know what that describes? That describes the Jewish law. And Paul, I forget which church it is. That Paul writes to. But there's one of those churches that Paul writes to. And they have gone back. To the law. And Paul. Man he, he chews them out. He wants to know. Who is the person that, that beguiled you. You know there's the Pope. And then there, there are the red cardinals. And the black cardinals. Maybe they're playing chess. I don't know. But there's nothing like that in the, in the Baptist church. Now, some Baptist preachers will lay burdens on the people that are ridiculous. I was in a church where they practically forced you, we're going to have a fast. <laughs> I had a pastor one time come up to my fiance, Lisa and I, if you don't come to our fellowship, I'm not going to marry you. Wait a minute. I said, wait a minute, we come to Sunday school, right? Yes. We come to Sunday service. Yeah, you're, you guys are faithful to that. And when there is a Sunday night, when there is a Sunday night, we come. Yeah. We come to midweek service. Yeah. But if we don't come to the fellowships, that church is broken, split. And who knows how it is today? But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They regulate themselves to be seen. Now, didn't we say the man that's on the street, on the street, he prays, oh Lord God, I want to be saved. Look at me, give money to the charity.
A Catholic will walk around with ashes on his forehead on Ash Wednesday. Styly will get in trouble at work and he'll look at the person with ashes. Hey, you got to, your forehead's dirty. Oh, my priest gave you that. All least he could have done was wash his hands. He's always making fun of our religion. Yes, I am. Show me where you put burnt ashes on your forehead. Ah, oh, I know two places. One place under the law, 144,000 are marked. And then there's those that are marked by the Antichrist. Uh-huh. That's not for the Christians. That's not the church age. They make broad their phylacteries. I may say it wrong, but let's go to Deuteronomy 11 for this one. You say, what on earth is a phylacter? You, you don't, listen, you don't have to say it properly. God could be up in heaven. Some of these names, like, you know, you gave it a shot. For many, they never read it. Deuteronomy 11, 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these words in your heart and in your soul. Bind them for a sign upon their head. Now what they've done, and they may be frontless between their eyes. You know what they've done, these provocations back to Matthew, is, verse 5, they had made these paper, they had made scripture enclosed in a small little box and they wear it around their head where do you see that by the way to quote what i quote is your back under the law and yet for some baptist preachers that will ask for the keys for your car to move your car because he's got guests coming because you've got tons of scripture bumper stickers all the way around your car that upsets the Baptist preacher. Meanwhile, our family sitting in Burger King in the window seat, enjoy watching people walk around our car and take pictures of our car. We enjoy being at a red light, our windows roll down. Hey, Amen to the bumper stickers. But the Baptist preacher, and there's another one I, I, I may think, I don't know of a surety, if he doesn't like our car. You say, well, that's a phylactery. No, it's not. That's scripture. That's a witness. Phylactery is the stuff they wear that people can say, oh, look. Now, I am reminded, and I remind this story quite often, is I was in a hospital in Norwich. I got in the elevator. There's three women, and then comes this guy. He's got his tag on backwards. And they're like, Oh, good afternoon, Father. Good afternoon, Father. And they look at me. I said, hi, sir. And they gave me this look like, you devil. How dare you dress this man as sir? And one woman said, he's a priest. I said, he doesn't even know what, which way the tag goes. You're supposed to. I said, do you know what? She goes, well, I was in a prison ministry then. I said, do you, I'm a chaplain. I'm wearing a button up short sleeve shirt, and I don't know if I'm wearing blue, probably wearing blue jeans. You don't know who I am, but he sure shows himself off. And the women and the guy, I'm not calling him no, well, Jesus said, call no man your father, got highly displeased with me. I got off on the floor before them. They went up. They probably had some kind of seance or something for me. They dressed like they do. Say, oh, look at you. And they enjoy that title of respect. I mean, it, it amazes me. You get some preachers out there. They got in the back of their car, no scripture, or in the window of their, their windshield, pastor, reverend. What did Job say? Their license plate flame says pastor or reverend. Their only bumper sticker in their car is XYZ Baptist Church. Where's the scripture? Where's the scripture? No scripture. Church or the man. I get 
sometimes friend requests. I got one, only one, because it, it just it just makes me laugh when I see his church services laugh. If, if you're a bishop, you are not going to be my friend. If you are an apostle, you're not going to be my friend. And love the uppermost rooms at the feast. That's, the, that's where everybody can look up and see them. The Baptist church has got the, the, the upper stage. It's not, it's not an altar no more. It's a stage. It's a place to perform. Now, if it's an altar, I read this the other day and I didn't write it down. If it's an altar, look at Exodus 20, verse 26. It used to be when I was first saved, it was an altar. Come to the altar. Here at the altar. Now it's a stage. You perform. Exodus 20, 26. Now, if it's an altar, a prayer altar, neither shall thou go up by steps unto my altar. Does the altar in your church have steps? Then it's not an altar. That thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. All right, I, I, we don't wear the skirts and the robes like they did back then. I had had one case in one church where a woman was going up to the altar in such a slinky dress that when she got up, it actually came down. But a Bible altar that people are now angry with me is not to have steps. We can't have that upper kind of thing. You know, the people look up to me and I look down to them. You mean Nicolaio to you? Then the people, we the... And God says he hates them. And the chief seats in the synagogues. So evidently in the synagogues, there was a row of seats that you could not see. Because they were for ooh, the religious... I have been, or no, I, I shouldn't say I have been. I have been in a church where there has been revivals. And you have to put a piece of paper where you sit with your name on it. And then there are special seats for the... I ain't coming. Give my seat to another. We got this thing about seats. They got to be padded. What happened to the wooden? I got a picture from Mystic, Connecticut, one of the museums. They have a church where it is wooden. Your hiney will hurt at the end of the service. You know, in the early church of America that was built upon Christ, you didn't sit down. You stood for the whole time unless you were elderly. They had elderly seating. That it, it, you couldn't stand on one page. You stood. You got padded seats, seats that remind you you're in a movie theater. You probably got a place where you can put your drink because you got to bring your coffee in now. And they still don't bring the plate. And greeting, verse 7, in the markets. Hi, Father. Hi, Reverend. Hi, Pastor. And to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, which means Master. Be not be called Rabbi, for one is your Master. Rabbi meant Master. Master meant Rabbi. And if you remember, in 22, verse 16, they said Master. Verse 24, they said Master. And they said, verse 36 and 22, chapter 20, they said, Master. They called him a rabbi. Jesus said, call no man rabbi. Call no man your father. Call no man master. And I had a Catholic say, you mean to tell me you never called your dad father? No, I didn't. I called him dad. 
Well, what about Father's Day? I never sent him a card because he's... He, that's an honor of a man, not Jesus. You mean to tell you you never sent your dad a Father's Day card? Right, never did. I don't send my mom a Mother's Day card. That's an honor of a man, not the man Christ Jesus. I don't celebrate the birthday of Jesus. No, duh. It's February. Coming on February, he's still quoting stuff about Christmas. For one is your master, even Christ. Read that for a moment. Read that to yourself for a moment. Now, the Jehovah Witnesses will say that Jesus never said he was God. Well, who is master? Who is Christ? You know? So, let's see, Matthew 23, 1 through 3. Ten. That's where we are. Amen. That didn't help. Yeah, okay. Matthew 23, 9. And call no man father upon the earth, for one is your father, capital F, which is in heaven. Okay? Don't call your priest a father. He's not God. Like the Pope claims to be father. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Back to 23. See where we are. So, verse verse five, they enlarge the borders of their garments. I skipped that one. They wear outfits, clothing that would say, "Look at me." You ever see a nun? How do you know she's a nun? How do you know the Pope is the Pope? Let's say by chance you're watching television, the Pope is somewhere, and the camera screen, and he screens right by, and you, hey, that was the Pope. How'd you know that? How would you know if you just saw me in a crowd? I'm a doctor of theology. I am. I came this close to being a PhD. And God shut everything down. I guess God didn't want me to be. That's okay. I'm happy where I am right now. May, may God bless me in my next move, literally move, to use me where I'm going. And love the uppermost rooms in the feast. In other words, they want the best. And the chief seats in the synagogues. I bet how dare it would be if you sat in one of their seats. Ooh. Anathema. And greetings in the market. And to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be ye not called rabbi. Oh, here it is right here. Right where we are. One is your master. Even Christ. And all ye are brethren. Brethren, what's that? Jewish. Hebrews. Israel. Talking to the multitude. Remember verse 1. Now, we're going to stop right there. We know verse 9, but we're going to stop right there. Because we're going to deal with 
This is what the Pharisees do. This is what the religion does. And this is what they look like. And there are other religions worldwide that they make you do. You can, you can starve to death, but you can't eat a cow. Well, you know what? I'm a... I'm going to go get me a steak knife. I'm going to. All right. If a cow happens to pee when you are there, you're just supposed to go step your head into it. You are to make this long journey to Mecca. You are to make this long journey to go trace the footsteps of Jesus in Jerusalem. Ouch. That hurt. You are to go to see the ark that God never commanded to be built. You are to go to Washington, D.C. and see the Bible Museum. <laughs> in Washington? <laughs> and who knows with, with the Oriental, Japanese, and Chinese, with, with the family, the heritage, and all, and all the rites and rituals of their religion. And then we see who they are. As I said, you, you step in an elevator and you know who he is. You don't know who I am. You wouldn't know who my pastor is. We don't dress to impress. And then we have titles, which Job talked about. And we're going to stop right there with the rabbi, because that, that goes with what we're doing. Your rabbi in your synagogue today, you call him rabbi, they still do. You are a master, and you are deceiving your people. I watched a video the other day, street preachers, and these Hebrews, Jewish people were in this, they were, had flags and all that. And they were talking about, they were serving their Messiah, like, ooh, this is good. I'm listening to it. And, you know, their Messiah... He's coming that, that the lion, the tribe of Judah. I'm like, wow, amen. And the guy asked, he goes, did your Messiah die? He goes, yes. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is part of the gospel. He said, has your Messiah risen from the dead? He goes, no. That's what we're waiting for. What? Who taught them that? They're rabbis. And he brought up our Isaiah 53. And they have no regard to Isaiah 53. I've heard so many different things with Jewish people in Isaiah 53. It's the Messiah. It's the Master. David, we read earlier, said, call them Lord. <laughs> He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down my right hand to a man. Listen, that's God speaking to the Lord. That's the Lord speaking to the Lord. That's God speaking to God. Now we're going to get into the nook and cranny. And I had a pastor, Southern Baptist pastor, Bob, who get up in the pulpit that he didn't have a pulpit. He didn't have a Bible. Even the modern ones he professes. And he get up there, every time you pass by a church, you pray for that church. Lord willing, tomorrow night, you, 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 join us, 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 us. Lord willing. There's been a lot of medical things with me. Pray for me. Lord willing, I will show you Jesus will say, don't pray for them. Now, you can pray for their souls. You're not going to pray for the church. Not when they deceive the people. I've been a Roman Catholic. And that, that, pre, that, that priest, that pastor, has never been in a Roman Catholic church. 
I was in it for 16 years. My mom told me, which I never, I never knew this until she told me. The Catholic Church made her sign papers because she married a heathen. My dad was didn't believe in anything. Evolution. My dad wasn't a Catholic. She had to sign papers that she would raise me as a Catholic. Woo-hoo! 1987, I broke those papers. I became a Christian. I became a child of God through Jesus Christ. 2009, my mom broke those papers. She became a Christian. She became saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. We ain't Catholics no more. That Southern Baptist preacher doesn't know anything about the Catholic Church? Well, you better shut up! Because you don't know nothing. And he's a doctor. Well, I would hate to go to my kidney doctor and say, Kidney doctor? I won't give you the name. I like it. But kidney doctor? Oh, you know, I got this pain over here in my side. Can you tell me where my kidneys are? No. You're not going to tell me where my kidneys are? I don't know where they are. Where are you going? I'm going to give me another kidney doctor. I want a kidney doctor who knows about kidneys. If I'm going to guide the, 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 the people in the church, I better know what I'm talking about and not give you false information. I had a preacher or a pastor come up to me, and I, I'm a widow twice. Oh, I can't say nothing. <laughs> I'm not saying every preacher should be a widow, but there are young preachers that come out. They're young in the ministry. Like that. They're greenhouse plants. They don't know what life is. You ever had, you know, where the bills weren't paid? You ever have complete agony? You ever, I want another prayer. The, the, the same, something about the three. Well, I don't have any fears. Really? Okay. I guess you don't have the fear of God. That's a fear we're all supposed to have. But that's it. 